Hi, I'm Mike Thompson. Somebody, you know who you are, but I won't say who, dropped their iPad and cracked it. Now the screen is pretty much shattered and the glass is starting to flake off. So I thought, oh great, I'm going to be out several hundred bucks. Well, as it turns out, on Amazon and eBay, you can find iPad replacement kits. So I thought I'd try my hand at replacing the screen on this. And uh, we'll see if it works, great, if not, it was a $20 risk uh, that I can certainly afford to take because 20 bucks is certainly less than several hundred to replace this thing. So I'm going to go ahead and see if I can replace this. And uh, I don't know. So on Amazon for I think 18 bucks, I got this whole iPad screen replacement kit. There's instructions. All right. And a tool kit. How about that? Um, a lot of things I don't have. So so I started by gently prying off this protective case on the back of the iPad here. So the instructions say to heat up the edges to loosen the glue, but it didn't specify with what. I tried a hair dryer, but then gave up and had to use a heat gun. Now be very, very careful because you don't want to heat things up too much, just enough to soften the glue. And I'm starting on the right hand side of the iPad because the connectors are over on the left. So after trying to pry the wrong direction many times, I found you have to pry down in between the edge of the frame and the glass and then lift. And the instructions say to just take it off in pieces so I'm not worried about making more pieces. It was really hard to intentionally break something even further like this. But I just slowly worked my way around with the included spatulas prying ever so gently. And then I just followed the spatulas around with my Harbor Freight heat gun. And that really gets things going. And you certainly want to make sure you have a vacuum handy because you've got to clean up these glass shards. They go everywhere. And piece by piece, it all starts to come off. I was vacuuming constantly. And it took me a while, but I finally got the entire right edge loose. You want to start with the right edge, the instructions say, because then the idea is to open the entire thing like a book towards the left. When it was time to open it up, I enlisted some help. I certainly recommend you have help because it's extremely nerve-wracking and an extra set of hands uh, can be invaluable. And this part, I might say, is absolutely terrifying. We've definitely passed the point of no return. Now the connections are over here in the lower left. There's a little ribbon cable that goes underneath the LCD screen. So that's why I opened it to the left like a book, being very careful not to yank on these cables. And then with the included screwdriver, I unscrewed the four screws on the LCD. And then I gently lifted the LCD out of the tray. And its connector is also in the lower left. There's a little clip around this connector, kind of like a roller coaster safety bar. You lift that up and then you can use it as a handle to pull the connector out of its socket. And then the little ribbon cable on the glass digitizer simply pulls straight towards the top of the iPad. And you can see this screen is an absolute mess. Now, of course, a lot of these cracks uh, were made by us during removal. And then we removed this sticky white border thing so that we could put the new one in. And then we have to go back and make sure that all the glass is out of this thing. Now, I'm using the little spatula that was included to bend the frame back out and remove this dent that initially cracked the glass. If your frame is bent, your new glass won't sit right. And then I'm reconnecting the LCD screen now. Although I probably should have connected the digitizer ribbon cable first because it goes underneath the glass, but the instructions weren't specific. So I recommend you connect the digitizer ribbon cable first. And it was kind of a pain to reattach, but I had to coax it very, very gently because I certainly didn't want it to snap. And you tuck the excess digitizer ribbon cable into the corner of the frame on the edge there. There's a little space under the lip where you can tuck the excess ribbon. Uh, but for this test, we're kind of leaving it loose. We just want to make sure everything's hooked up right. And you can see it doesn't sit flush, but this should be good enough for a test. Oh wow, the touch screen actually works. Awesome! Now the home button doesn't work unless the screen is flush. So I tuck the ribbon cable back in here to the edge of the housing, and that way I can get the screen flush where it should be. And now the home button works. Awesome. 
So a little bit of cleaning with the included microfiber cloth and we'll screw the screen back down. And the instructions weren't specific, so now I'm sliding this new white border thing back around the digitizer screen. It's a little awkward, but I made it work. And then we simply pressed it in place after we removed the uh, sticky back glue strip. Pay attention that you don't get it upside down. And then we simply pressed it in place after we removed the uh, sticky back glue strip. And then we removed the film on the back side here, being very careful now not to touch the back or the LCD because we don't want any fingerprints on the inside. This suction cup then helps to lower it into place and then you press it very gently yet firmly all around the edges making sure to line it up nice and straight. Wow, um, that was one of the scarier things I've actually ever done. Of course the iPad was dead regardless so an $18 risk was well worth it. Now as you saw I had to have help. I would not recommend you trying this by yourself. It's extremely nerve-wracking to try to juggle the digitizer screen and the LCD panel and not damage either one. So definitely try to get help. But as you can see here, this was the original. It was an absolute mess. Just Now of course we broke it a little bit more as we went to remove it, but um, it, it was about this bad when we started. As you see this other one over here, um, everything works just fine, which is really quite amazing. Audio, everything still works perfectly. It's just absolutely unbelievable. Anyway, uh, that took about an hour and a half. It was extremely nerve-wracking, but if you have no other option, it certainly beats spending a couple hundred bucks on a new iPad. So for 18 bucks uh, and an hour and a half worth of work, I'm extremely pleased. Go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already. I'm Mike Thompson, and thanks for watching. I really appreciate it.